They say an army marches on its stomach. And food sure is expensive in this game. And the bigger your army gets, the bigger salaries you need, and the bigger the food bill. So making money in Bannerlord is not only a perk, but a necessity. Awesome guys, Marty here with another Bannerlord video. And of course, today we're talking about how to make money in Bannerlord. How do you make money in Bannerlord? How do you make passive income so that you're bringing in more than you're paying while you're just sitting in a city? And how do you trade your way across the world, taking advantage of the economy like the Monopoly man? All these questions we're gonna go through in this video. So let's get into it. I'm not gonna break these down into, you know, early game methods, late game methods. Um, I feel like all the options are viable all the way through, just at different scales, depending on how big your army is and how much power you've got. So number one is mercenary work. Do you wanna become Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII and slaughter your enemies for pure profit? What you want to do is you wanna find looters, bandits, or if you're at war with an enemy faction, you wanna go into fight enemy factions and enemy caravans. Um, if you are at war, this definitely helps increase the inflow of coin because you can leverage more enemies on the way to each city. Um, rather than struggling to find little groups of bandits, you can take on big armies and you can take on big caravans like power level 50 caravans are great, things like that. Um, kill everyone you can win against, take everyone prisoner and loot every single item. Drag your haul of ungodly gains back to the nearest town and sell all the equipment, all the weapons and all your prisoners at the tavern and then just walk away with your fortunes in blood money. And then all you've got to do, quickly recruit the lost troops and recover your losses. Head back out and do it all again. This works amazing in the early game and I do this pretty much right until I get about 180 to 100 units, like clan level three. Um, basically at this point, you start needing a lot more money daily for your troops and it takes longer to recover your losses. Like if you're doing like a 100 versus 80 fight, you might lose like 20, 30 people. Um, especially if you've got like new recruits that aren't leveled up and then yeah you, you, you're going to spend a lot of time recruiting them back so it's definitely I use it a lot in the early game but you can use it all the way through and if you're ever in a pinch for money just do it to make a bit of money um, if you're doing this tactic this leads straight into the second tip and that is forging so maybe you don't want to forge I would still recommend forging and I know I know not forging the weapons but using the forging interface for a certain thing so the bandits and enemies that you that you loot items from it will give you lots of weapons and the weapons have very little value especially the ones from like looters so what you want to do is you want to go into the trade buy some hardwood and then go into the forging menu and turn the hardwood into charcoal in the refining section and then what you want to do is, if you look in the trade window, a basic weapon that you get from the looters sell for very little money. And you're really not getting the best price here. So what, what I would suggest, go into the forger and smelt that down into parts. This also levels up your smithing, which helps you make money later in the game. Um, but even if you don't, if you want to completely ignore smithing, just do this um, and it will give you the raw materials. Now, if you go back and look at the selling price of the raw materials, um, they should sell for slightly better than the weapons. Do it on a big scale, smelt like 20 items at a time um, from what you get. Um, I think the city I was in when I was recording, the raw materials didn't sell for much, but you can see that they sell for a lot more in other cities. So I'll just hold on to them until I find the right price. Um, but you, ultimately you'll get more money than what you would from the base material, base weapon, and you are leveling up your forging. Uh, one tip that I see a lot is people running out of stamina saying forging isn't worth it. Um, if you've got companions, you can go into the bottom left of the forging menu and switch the companion that's going to be doing the forging. Uh, so if you've got someone who's good at forging, this obviously helps. Um, if you've just got like three or four companions, you can just switch through your companions and use all their energy first. And then you're not waiting a day before you have to forge again. You can plow through everything, go back out on the hunt. Um, so yeah, definitely get into forging, even if it's just for this uh, melting down part. Um, tip three. We covered that you can't get the best price everywhere. So trading. Trading is quite a elusive beast. So rather than being a barbarian, marching around and killing everything in your path, you could take the more civilized route and extort people financially. So buy something from one town, haul it on the bunch of donkeys, walk it somewhere else and sell it for a profit. If you click on an item in the trade window, it's easy to miss, but if you look at the price, it can either be green, yellow, or red. Green is an undervalued item, uh, yellow is pretty average, and then red is overvalued. The bigger the percent means the better profit margin you will get by using this. So obviously uh, a high profit margin on a green item means it's much lower than expected, and a high percent on a red item means it's more overvalued. Um, yeah. So. What you want to do is find a place with red items and then see where you want to source this from. Go find the item, 
and then sell it to the city you're in for a profit or find a green item buy in bulk and then sell it on somewhere else where it is either yellow or red uh, make sure you hold down control when you buy the items so that you're buying them all not just singular items if you press this you can buy the items in bulk rather than selling them individually if you were to say let's say a vendor had an item that was red which means they need a lot of that item as you sell more of the item one by one their value will start to normalize down because they're no longer a high demand for the item if you sell it all at once you'll get the best deal um, that's currently maybe they're going to patch that at some point but that is working for me um, yeah so yeah, finding the right place. That's that's uh, that's the next bit. Once you get a higher trade, you can, you can, I mean, you can interrogate caravans, or you can increase your trade for information, um, and you can learn where stuff sells and for what price it sells for. Um, and then, when you go on the item, you can highlight the item and see where it sells high and where it sells low. So then, if you do find an item that's red, um, you know you're going to sell that item to this town. You can use this window to see where you're going to go buy that item from, and then you've just made your own trade route. Um, but if you're one of those kids that used to use cheat codes or you know you used to use the infinite money glitch in the sims then there's plenty of guides out there and maps with really good trade routes already planned out that you can just take and copy um, no judgment here now for the sexy stuff caravans like most financial gurus you see on youtube and tiktok i will teach you how to make passive income if you want to sit in the city watching your wealth grow earning you more money while you sleep then what you want to do is get on the caravan game Go into a C, walk around and slap that alt key. It'll highlight all the areas of interest and what you want to do is find a trade that interests you. Go talk to the owner and tell them you want to set up a caravan. What you're going to need here is 15,000 gold and one companion that you're going to lose permanently. They'll still be in your party but you can't use them because they're going to be manning the caravan. Um, this is a big outset of costs and it seems risky but it will quickly rack in the money. And at the very least, I would recommend getting enough caravans to cover your salaries. The, the caravans start bringing in like a small amount of money, like a few hundred gold, but they quickly rank, they, they ramp up and you will earn crazy money with caravans and you literally do nothing. Um, if you're struggling to get your first 15,000 and you don't have the money to play the trading game, I'm going to give you some more options here to make money. But yeah, you want to be working on, you know, trading, uh, mercenary work to funnel money into the caravan game. If you, don't, if you can't, if none of those are an option for you or you don't want to do either of those, I'm going to give you some extra options here to make that first 15,000. So tournaments. If you strive for the rush of spinning the roulette wheel or you just have the infinite confidence in yourself that you will always win, you can gamble and ban yourself. You'll easily rack up a thousand gold in tournaments if you win. Uh, whether or not you abuse the save and reload feature is up to you. Again, no judgment here. Another one is doing quests. It's definitely a really good one in the early game. Um, go to the local villages that have a big blue question mark and take the quest. Some of the best quests in my opinion for making money, I mean kind of making money at, managing making money without wasting time um, and losing people is what I try and do. So the best in my opinion for these things is delivering things. So like the delivering herds, um, you literally just take a herd from one town to another and you get like 500 gold. If you also get a trade route going, you know, buy something cheap, sell it expensive at the same time, win-win. Um, Another good one, ambush a caravan. Normally the caravans will just walk out of the city gates and get attacked. You go help. Uh, the caravans do most of the work anyway. You just kind of hang back at the back and fire some arrows. You'll get all, all the prisoners and loot from them as well, as well as the money. Uh, family feud and art of the deal can also make some cash, but just be careful you do it right. Um, I'd avoid anything too time consuming, like going into the hideouts or escorting caravans or training troops. Because yeah, they just take a lot of time and time best spent doing easier things, I think. Uh, once you get into the late game and you have your own castles and stuff, you really do have armies and like economies of scale to do whatever you want, uh, fiefs and all that stuff. So I don't want to go into like anything super late game. This was kind of to help you make money early. Not early, but like make money when you have no money. Um, if you do want a video on the late game money making and you, you haven't made money by the late game, which I would expect most people have. If you haven't and you want a video on how to, you know, make the hundreds of thousands late game, let me know. I'd happily do that. Um, yeah, other than that guys, hopefully I've given you enough basic tips to start dominating everyone in the game, either economically or through combat, um, so that money just becomes uh, a non-issue and you can just sit in your castles watching your caravans bring you thousands and thousands of gold and fuel your war game. Um, 
if you want me to go any, into anything on a, in a full guide on its own, let me know in the comments like if you want a trading guide or if you didn't understand the forging thing, let me know. I'd happily make another video like specifically going over that issue. Um, or if you've got your own tips to make money that I've missed, please let me know. Um, this is a huge game and I kind of just do what I, I know and I've kind of been doing this since the game came out. Um, and it, it's always worked, so I've never tried anything new. But if there's something really good that works, let me know. Um, and yeah, alternatively, I haven't covered any glitches really. So if you've got any like money-making glitches, feel free to share those in the comments for people. Um, there were a lot of people that will use glitches. And yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. If you wanna, if you can't be asked to make money and you just wanna fight, sure, do it. Yeah, help each other out. Um, but yeah, if this has helped, I love medieval games like Bannerlord and I make videos on this and other games like it all the time. If that's something you're into as well, subscribing to the channel will deliver the videos straight to you as I make them. Other than that, guys, I won't waste any more of your time. Thank you, and catch you in the next one.